I will pick up the bar and break the f*** open with it. She'll be dead in the street. She's a monster. And I'll stab you to death. Uh, Chris Pesciello, which made the front page of every paper. They kind of frown on it publicly when you shoot your boyfriends. It doesn't go over big with the yeah, public. The but they arrested both of us for attempted murder. Love Majewski, infamous Staten Island gang, the Untouchables. In Brooklyn, New York in 1971, rose up in the tough Bensonhurst neighborhood, home turf of America's most notorious crime families. Mob lifestyle was openly promoted. You saw people driving in very fancy, luxurious cars. They had uh, expensive jewelry on. They had a lot of money. York, Staten Island. At that time, in the late 80s and early 90s, everybody wanted to be a tough guy. People aspired to be, got the recognition, got the money. Single-handedly put several car dealerships out of business by literally taking that much of their inventory away. Beat a landscaper with a leaf blower and almost killed the guy, hospitalized him for blowing leaves. Love has received information from mob associates about a safe in the home of Staten Island couple. The safe is rumored to be full of cash. Did somebody violent enough because they were going inside uh, with handguns to uh, rob the homeowners of this money. The fateful day arrives and the crew sets out to rob the home. Chris waits behind the wheel of the getaway car. Helping her daughter get ready for a date as the doorbell rang. It went downstairs to open the door, thinking it was the date that her daughter was, was going to meet. Rushed into the house. A firearm was discharged. Huh? Struck the face as the daughter was running downstairs. She ultimately wound up dying in the daughter's arms. I said, like, this is the end. This is gonna be a big deal. And Chris Pacello made a deal. And uh, soon after that, he was cooperating with the government and testifying against people. Right, a whole, a whole string of people who he'd known for years and years, people who he'd pledged he would never rat out. When you sit there and you, like, on and on and on, how I would never do that, I would never be a rat, and then you do it, it's so bizarre. Don't get in that situation, especially altercations where you lose consciousness. Mm. I kind of black out. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was out in a club, and these girls started fighting my girlfriend, whatever, and I got into it with these three girls in the bathroom. My girlfriend said, she goes like, I don't know what happened. The door closed, and she heard her screaming, picking up a and stabbed at least 12 times. It takes a lot of force to crack the skull. I know I need to remain calm and not get crazy, but it's kind of out of my control. I'm really concerned and worried for Carla because love has mental problems. Hello, Carla. This is not a person that you want to ignore and make believe this is not happening because it is happening. The I don't give a f I don't give a f attitude is definitely not good for her health. Really? Who gives a f Love is gonna make her wanna give a f Good amounts of years with somebody that you played house with. Please, out of jail. Nothing to do if I know Doesn't I'm Doesn't he have to anyway. go to a halfway house before yeah, he comes yeah. home? Halfway so. house. This is not the first time that he went away. Knowing him as long as I do, I hope that he stays home this time. It would be so sad to see him go away again. Shoot his balls off or something. Make a little pancetta out of his piñata, maybe. <laughs> he thought that you were a nut. You make it sound like I'm completely unstable. <laughs> I will pick up the bar and break her skull open with it. She'll be dead in the street. She don't give a Last night we were arguing and 
she said something. I heard her mumble something, and then I heard her going to the bedroom. The light was off. And so I had to follow her in. You know, I crept up. She didn't know I was there. I had to put the ninja on and snuck up behind her. She was digging in a drawer. And I swear, I thought she, if a pistol would have came out of that drawer. Things be with nice dinner, and you're fucking with me right now for no reason. I'm serious, though. So. If I finish this meal and you eat it, you're going to be real sick. I would never, babe, I would never poison you. You know I wouldn't. Not in public. Yeah. Well, I got a knife in my hair. The issue was that when you're here, we work and we do what we got to do and we behave. When you go home, do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. I don't say anything. I don't care. Did I ever once ask you a question? Ever? 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 So what am I supposed to do? See? I'm going to stare at the wall. Huh? No, stare at me, motherfucker. How about that? Stare at me. You want to see titties? I got titties all day. What the fuck? You can't look at that? <laughs> he's either going to be dead or he's going to be on a feeding tube. You know, I don't want to get, you know, hurt, cuts me or, or shoots me. Seriously? Up, no fucking way. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not even joking with you. Stop with the phone. And end up dead. So we accept that and we just avoid it at all times. What will die? Praying that I don't throw up on the table and humiliate myself. Years has passed. I feel like ten minutes passed. It's the same. I do. We wrecked a hotel room having sex. We were like broke lamps, walls, dressers, doors. I think it was a little crazy. A friend here had oysters. He almost put me through a wall in the hotel in Las Vegas.